Hi there, I'm Steve and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to teach you about image size and we're just going to talk about the basics because image size is a huge subject especially when you get into cropping and resizing and blowing images up and shrinking images down and all the things that can happen. But I'm going to talk to you about the very basics to give you a kind of foundation and then I'm going to make more videos to expand on this topic so we can get into resizing images and changing shapes of images and things like that. So to introduce this conversation, I'm going to jump over into an image here. And this is probably familiar to if you've seen other videos of mine. And this is just an image of a woman kayaking. And let's talk about the size of this image. And the way you look at the size of an image is you go up to image and you go to image size. You can also do control alt i. So we'll go ahead and do that because it's good to practice shortcuts. Control alt i and here is our image size preview window and you basically have a preview of what's going on right there. You can make this bigger or smaller if you want. You can also make this window bigger so that you have a bigger preview or sometimes I will just slide this down, move this preview window out of the way, and just look right at my image. Either way that you want to do it is fine. This gives us a preview, and then this gives us information about our image. So this tells us the actual size of the file that this image is. So this is 7 megs, or megabytes. That's how much space it's going to take up on your computer. If you were putting this image on a website, this would be way too big. Generally speaking, if you're creating a website, you want your photos to be quite small in file size so that your website will load and run faster because there's less data to, to load. But that's where you learn about that. This just basically shows you your dimensions it's like just a reference point, but you can see all of that information down here just pretty much as easily. This fit too gives you some presets that you can do. If you click here, you can go to like some preset sizes. We won't get into that too much because we're going to go ahead and do it right here. And a lot of times when you open this up, it will default and this will be set on pixels. You notice both of these are now set on pixels, and it tells you this tells you the same information as what's up there. You can also change this, and most of the time you'll be looking at pixels or inches, um, at least in the US. You may be using centimeters if you're printing somewhere else in the world, because apparently we're the only ones who haven't joined the metric system. Um, and then sometimes you might use percent, but a lot of times it'll be pixels or inches. So that shows you your dimensions, and then if you want to see it in inches, say we want to print this image, and we want to know how big it's going to print. If I just close this window, clicked print, how big is it going to print on paper? I can go to inches, and it's going to be 6.4 by 4 inches. 4 inches and change, right? If you wanted to go to centimeters, then you look at it and you can see, okay, it's 16 centimeters wide, 10 centimeters high, okay? And then down here, your resolution shows you how many pixels you have per inch in your image. And the numbers you'll usually see will be like 72, which is what you will often see used for the web because it makes a smaller image, as you can see what it just did there, and then all the way up to about 300, which is usually what you would use for printing because it means that there are 300 pixels packed into every inch of space on your image as opposed to only having 72 pixels packed into there which means as you zoom in it's going to get grainy and on any image if you zoom in far enough I'll go way in well that's 800 percent you can start to see the pixels and it might let me do a preview if I hit 72 yeah, at 72 pixels per inch, if I when I'm zoomed in at 800%, you can see the pixels are huge, right? Like you can see these big pink pixels down the side of our arm, whereas if we're at 300 and we're zoomed in 
to the same zoom where we just were, which is about there, then the pixels are much smaller in relationship to the image. So anyway, going back to inches here, you can see that if I printed this image, it would come out as six inches wide and four inches tall at 300 pixels per inch. Now, if you wanted this to be a panorama and you wanted it to be 12 inches wide by four inches high, that's something that you have to change using the crop tool. If you want to change the actual ratio of height to width, then you have to crop out part of your image. So if this was going to be, let me scroll out real quick or zoom out so you can see the whole image. That's the whole image. If you wanted this to be a panorama that was 12 inches wide and 4 inches high, you would have to crop it in along the top of these mountains and all the way across and then right along the bottom of the boat and that would give you that panorama. You can't do that here. What you can do here though is you can change the size of your image. And generally speaking you can increase the size of your image a bit without destroying the quality, especially if it's an image that is has 300 pixels per inch resolution because that's going to be a more crisp image. There are more pixels per inch which means you can make it bigger without losing the detail and without getting just a bunch of fuzzy pixels. So if I wanted to make this a little bit bigger I can actually change these dimensions. You have to change them together or you're going to like stretch your image, which obviously you don't want to do. So this is going to by default usually be locked and you're going to leave it that way. You can uncheck that and then you can change one of these independently, but it's not generally a good idea unless you're going for distortion. So you're going to leave that checked. And then let's say I wanted to make this image 10 inches wide. I'll just take this and I'll hit 10 and you can see that this automatically changed as well in proportion to the width. So I now have a 10 by 6 inch image rather than a 6 by 4 so quite a bit bigger if I was to print this. It's at, still at 300 and then if I'm going to click OK then Photoshop is asking if I want to resample it and resampling basically means it's going to rearrange the pixels to try and give me a better image quality when we're done. Because again if I just blow this up and I can zoom in to kind of give you an example if I just blow this up then you're gonna see more of the pixels as it gets bigger as the dimensions of it, the print dimensions get bigger and that can be a problem. I'm just expanding it a little bit, so we're kind of within the safe zone, but Photoshop can still also help you by resampling it. And a lot of times you can leave this on automatic and it will choose the best way to do it based on the arrangement of your pixels. But there are a bunch of other options that maybe I can go into in another lecture. But these even give you some clues. If you're going to enlarge it, you can go with by cubic smoother which is for enlargements or preserve details. If you're going to make it smaller you can make it use by cubic sharper and it even just like I say it kind of gives you helpful hints in the parentheses here for what you might want to use. But anyway you can usually stay on automatic and it will resample it for you. And basically what it's doing when it's resampling is it's just arranging the pixels in a better way whether you're increasing it or decreasing it, adding more if you're increasing it, and trying to use its algorithms, Photoshop's algorithms, to arrange these pixels in a better way to give you better quality. So we'll go ahead and do this. We'll make it 8 by 6 and we'll click OK. And it'll think for a minute. And you notice how it just got bigger on the screen. So now this is a bigger image. And if I hit Control 0, I can recenter it in within the frame, but you may or may not have heard of this shortcut. It's Control One, and if I hit Control One, that's going to give me, that's going to show me my image at 100%. And so now this is a bigger image than it was before, so you can see how much it zoomed in. And you can actually look up in here, and you'll see it says 100%. 
that's because it's zoomed all the way in. If I go back to control zero, then you'll notice it says 47.1% because I'm actually zoomed out from the original size or the new size of this image. But that's the basics of how to kind of look at, figure out what it, your image size is here and how to change the image size and then how to resample it. You almost always will leave this click. How to see how big your file size is. And you'll notice that our file size got bigger from before. I think it was seven megs before and now it's 17 megs because we've basically added pixels to the image. So grab a few images, go open your image size, your image image size window and take a look at what they are and you can even play around with it a little bit to get a sense of the different sizes of some of the images that you're working with. I'm going to try and do some more videos like this, so keep an eye out for some little cards that you can click on for those videos. Thanks so much for watching. If you like the video, Hit like, hit subscribe, and check out the courses in the description below, and I'd love to see you soon. Thanks for watching.